Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the servants of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these seeds come from, these weeds? And he answered, An enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time I will tell the, we the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my, uh, into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went back into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his, collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. If there are parents who have children with you that are two to six years old, I encourage you to let them go to the children's uh, service today. If they just go to the lady in the back who has the cross, they will see a movie that will be a good deal more enjoyable than a sermon about weeds. Pray with me. Oh God, we want to be wheat in your field, but we know the weeds that are in our lives. Help us to understand from this parable how we can help the kingdom of heaven come on earth. Amen. There are some things in life that are hard to explain. When I was doing neurosurgery, sometimes we would be uh, operating on a child with a brain tumor under the operating microscope and uh, and when the residents would say, Dr. A, that's what they call me, Dr. A, how do you know what's brain tumor and what's tissue? And it's hard to explain. I mean, say, well, it looks like this, it feels like this, but, it, you know, it takes a long time to distinguish them. The concept of the kingdom of heaven was a hard one for people to understand, even for Jesus to explain. I mean, in the 13th chapter of Matthew, he used five different parables to try to explain what the kingdom of heaven was like. Matthew called the kingdom of heaven what everybody else called the kingdom of God, but they're the same thing. He used five parables, and each one of them says, the kingdom of heaven is like, like, like. But it was hard to explain. I read a quotation by a Christian theologian named Dallas Willard. It helps me to understand it. Willard said, the kingdom of heaven exists where the will of God is being done. Let me repeat that. The kingdom of heaven exists where the will of God is being done. Each of Jesus' parables has a long history before we get it. He said those parables to a local congregation or a group of his disciples. And then the parables were told by person after person, year after year, decade after decade, until they were finally collected and edited into the four uh, Gospels that we have. Matthew's Gospel was probably not written until 50 to 60 years after Jesus died. So it went through a lot of people before it got there. Now Matthew, or whoever wrote the Gospel, it's debated, uh, most scholars now think it was a Christian in the church at Antioch. 
But whoever it was, they had a tendency that some of us have to like things black and white. And he wanted to divide people into evil or good. His was the only gospel that has the parable about the wheat and the weeds. You, know, you burn one of them and the other one shine like whatever. His is the only gospel that had the parable about the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Or the, gospel, the uh, parable at the end of Matthew that divides people into the sheep and the goats. I mean, if there was a parable that had judgment in it, Matthew was all over it. <laughs> the first paragraph in our reading today, Jesus gives the parable about the, uh, the wheat and the weeds. In the second paragraph, it's Jesus' interpretation of the parable, but that interpretation might have been influenced by Matthew's perspective on the parable. It describes the end of the world, and it says the weeds will be collected and thrown into the fire, and angels will come and gather all evildoers, that may be most of us, and put them into the fire where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I think that interpretation misses the point of Jesus' parable as he gave it because the parable is about the kingdom of heaven where the will of God is being done in wheat and weeds. So let's think about that for a minute. It starts off with someone sowed good seed in his field. An enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. Now most commentators believe that the field was either the world or more likely the church. And the wheat, that's us. And the weeds, anybody else. If any of you have a King James Version, you know that it was the parable of the wheat and the tares. You, some of you have heard that, okay? So the weeds it's talking about were a weed, it really is a weed, it's called Darnell. It's a kind of rye grass that looks very much like wheat until it grows up and you can see the ears of the wheat and in the ears you can see the seeds. The seeds in Darnell are little black spots. And if they get mixed in with the wheat, they can cause um, hallucinations or blindness and sometimes death. So it's reasonable to pick the weeds out. And what do you do with them? They were common in Palestine. You bundle them up and you burn them as fuel Fuel was in short supply in Palestine. So the servants ask, Master, do you want us to pull the weeds out? Expecting he would say yes. Now, when we read this parable, we naturally assume that we are the weeds and others are, uh, we are the wheat and the others are the, are, are the weeds. It seems like we have a natural tendency, it's almost like an original sin, to want to divide people and things into us and them, good and evil, in and out. And so some of us might have asked, Master, do you want us to clean up the church rolls? There's people on the rolls that don't come. They don't tithe. And when they're lying in bed on Sunday mornings, they don't even live stream the worship services. You want us to get rid of them? But the Master says, no. No, leave them alone. Let them grow together with the wheat, and at the time of the harvest, I'll take care of it. There's something about that parable that I don't like, though, because it seems to categorize people into either good or evil, as if people were completely good or completely evil. And I don't think that's true. I mean, it's not true in my life, I know. Let me offer a different perspective on the parable. Suppose, well, it says someone sowed seed in his field. Suppose that the someone was God who sowed seed in his field, which is us, with weeds in our lives. We are the field with weeds in our lives. And suppose the seed is the spirit of Christ that, sows, that God sows into our lives along with the weeds. He wants to, 
He doesn't want to make the separation. All fields have weeds, right? And all people have weeds. And that's why he said, don't try to get rid of the weeds because we cannot tell like he can who is weed or who's, uh, who is wheat. I mean, for all you know, you don't know if I'm 60-40. 60 percent wheat, 40 percent weeds. God knows and it's God's field. So God wants to free us from our tendency to divide people into good and evil, us and them, in and out, so that we can get on with God's business of loving each other and living with each other as God's family, which we are. And as many of you know, some families have weeds, right? Let me close with a, a reading by Barbara Brown Taylor. She's one of the best Christian writers, authors, and preachers in the United States. And listen to this parable about weeds and wheat and see if you think it's faithful to Jesus' parable. She said, one afternoon in the middle of a growing season, a bunch of farmhands decided to surprise their boss and weed his favorite field. No sooner had they begun to work than they began to argue, first about which of the wheat-looking things were weed and then about the rest of the weeds. Did the Queen Anne's lace pose a real threat to the wheat or could it stay for decoration? And the blackberries, they would be ripe in just a week or two, but they were, after all, weeds, weren't they? Or, or were they? And the honeysuckle, it seems a shame to pull up something that smells so sweet. About the time they got to debating the purple asters, the boss came back and ordered them out of the field, dejected they did it they, as they were told, and back at the barn, he took their machetes away from them he poured them some lemonade and made them sit down where they could watch the way the light toward the end of day came across the field as the day ended. At first, all they could see was the weeds and what a messy field it was, what a disgrace it was to them, the workers, and to the owner. But as the, they came back and did that day after day, as the summer went on, they, they continued to watch and they marveled at the profusion of growth the tall wheat being surrounded by tall goldenrod, ragweed and black-eyed Susans. The weeds and the poison ivy flourished along with the Cherokee roses and the milkweed, and it was a mess, but it was a glorious mess. And when all of it had bloomed and ripened and gone to seed, the reapers came. Gently, carefully, expertly, they gathered the wheat and they put the rest into bricks for the oven where the bread was baked. And the fire that the weeds made was excellent. And when the harvest was over, the owner called them all together, the reapers, the farmhands, the neighbors, and broke bread with them. Bread that was the final distillation of that whole messy, gorgeous, mixed up field. And they all agreed it was like no bread any of them had ever tasted before, and that it was very, very good. Let those who have ears to hear listen.